All right, let's start off right away with the first paper this morning on Breakfast Central on a Wednesday morning here from Lagos, Nigeria, where we're broadcasting from. And our first paper takes you straight to one particular country. Let's take a look at the very first one today. And this morning, um, Oluchi will be looking at uh, one of the papers from Nigeria, and that has to do with the punch. The punch newspaper has so much, so much. All right, yes, it does have so much. It leads on the Electoral Act, where it talks about presidency. OSGF disagree over Buhari's minister's refusal to resign. That's on page two of the paper. Like Amechi Ngige declares for presidency, refuses to leave office. Now, according to the constitution, are you supposed to step down when you have intention of running for a higher position or a higher office in government? Well, this is up for debate. But right now, it says the Marafa faction wants APC against repeating Zamfara 2019 mistake. What happened in Zamfara in the year 2019? You can get more of that from the punch this morning. Now, you can see the picture here. These pictures have our major stakeholders in the country. From the first citizen of the country himself, that's the president, Mohamed Buhari, who, who has come out and he's talking really tough. He's saying, I won't allow anyone to destabilize Nigeria. Buhari tells governors, service chiefs, that's on page 28 of the punch this morning. The upper part on page 17, power generation crashes. It hasn't increased. It crashes by 903 megawatts. National grid crisis persists. So just in case... You're enjoying power supply in Nigeria for now. Please enjoy it and maximize it while you can because darker days might be ahead. There's more from there um, from the punch this morning. The last one from the punch. Despite CBN clamp down, Nigerians traded 316 billion naira Bitcoin in 2021. Page 18 from the punch. All right. So much from the punch there. I also liked uh, that story there where it says uh, the Chrislin uh, sexual act school parents, pupils meet parent uh, police today. That's one story there. And um, also that one, drop your presidential beats. If any fair leader tells Tony Banner, Shibanjo. Anyway, let's go straight to the citizen. That's what you can find on the screen there. The citizen is one big paper there in Tanzania. Insurance firms bounce back from COVID impact. Wow, this is really interesting. Well, Tanzania's insurance industry made an impressive recovery from the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic last year with the top 10 general insurance firms registering a 34% growth in total profits. For me personally, I saw this coming, especially I've been, I, I, I was talking to someone this week and I said, I'm very certain that uh, post-pandemic we'll see a lot of companies, uh, not just the hospitality and tourism industry, of course, from the um, banking sector, from different sectors who would uh, pay more attention to insurance because the pandemic taught them a lesson they never will want to go through again. Uh, people who had to sell off their buildings, their properties, um, people who did not engage in insurance for their staff and so on. You mentioned it. So it's much more like an eye opener. So right. the only thing you could do is you just do well to um, invest in insurance, make sure that you protect the future and so on and so forth. Don't forget, a lot of people were also sick. So had it been they had the HMO, the insurance policies as well, uh, it would also help them to fall back on that insurance policy to take care of their health. So Joe, the insurance company, are they praying for another surge no, no, where, really. uh, where no, no, this no. might affect them positively? I mean, so, so, this, so, this is coming at a time when people could yeah. barely, I mean, could barely afford health when it mm -hmm. comes to taking care of themselves. But mm -hmm. you know, the people who could afford it, the elite, the upper class, saw the need to ensure that if they're not available tomorrow, at least mm -hmm. their family members mm -hmm. are well taken care of. That has brought the upsurge that we're seeing right now in the, um, in the insurance sector. But I mean, this is coming at a time where people are still questioning and how well have you sensitized the people in your country on the need and the importance of insurance? If there's a disaster today, how many people? Look at look at the one that happened last year in 2020. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, hash, the NSAS saga that happened. Mm -hmm. A lot of businesses were heavily affected. Insurance companies should have cashed in at that time so, to let people understand the importance of insurance so, so the question in the country. Is, the, the, the point is, did they cash in? Answer, absolutely yes. Yes. Uh, so with, with the COVID pandemic as well, because I mean, doing a little research from my own point of view is with the pandemic, you find out that especially those who were sick and didn't have, a, let's just take an instance, a HMO, uh, which was going for as low as about 3,000 naira pre-pandemic. And those who didn't have it, those who had it were making use of it. And those who didn't have it, it it's like an eye opener now to say, you know what, we need to get it right now. We're not praying for another pandemic, but if anything comes forward, at least we're 
going to be ready. So the health workers were heavily yeah. overwhelmed. Julie, Everyone just not, needs to be I ready. Mean, so we understand that this is a positive thing, but we need to also empower the health sector because let's not forget there's a brain drain in that sector and it's still heavily underutilized. Mm -hmm. And at that point in time, the pressure on them was a whole lot. They had to come out during that period to even talk to the federal government that the federal government hasn't given them certain allowances. That's in Nigeria. Oh, in, across the country, of, continent mm -hmm. of Africa as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, whichever way, but this is uh, some some sort of uh, news that insurance firms bounce back yeah. from COVID impact, and I, I, I'm 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 one of those who actually saw this coming, and it's not it's no surprise at all. Well, let's go to another one very short. How Royal Tour promo film will benefit you? That's a movie and so on. But in that uh, front page, you can see the president, uh, President Samia Suluhu Hassan, and American producer Peter uh, Grenberg answer invited guests questions uh, during. Uh, the uh, premiere of the Royal Tour documentary uh, at the, uh, uh, I, I can't see this, but I'm sure it's a museum. Yeah, of course, in New York on Monday. So you had uh, Samir Salua San in New York answering questions concerning um, the new documentary. Well, you can read up to know where you can watch the documentary and so much more. That's what I'm going to take from The Citizen. And to wrap up in the papers this morning, let's head to The Nation. Very quickly, The Nation is talking really hot about politics. Battle for PDP tickets hot up as nomination closes today. That's what it says. Tambo will submit <laughs> form. Says, I will unite Nigerians. This is also happening at the heels of um, Ngigi and Nnamani as they also join the presidential race from their own party as well. But you can get more on that from the Daily Nation. The picture you're seeing there, those are Nigerians who were stranded in Libya on their return at the Muritala Mohammed International, International Airport just yesterday in Lagos. <laughs>